A very good evening to the people who have joined us today on occasion of old International Older Persons Day. The Dementia Care Foundation welcomes you to ramp your 70s. To speak a little about the Dementia Care Foundation, we are a non-profit organization with the aim of improving the quality of life for elders with dementia and their caregivers. TDCF is a resource center for dementia and other services. We provide various cognitive screening tests for the elderly and our flagship program is the Dementia Day Camp, where we employ principles of cognitive rehabilitation, which is combined with meaningful leisure activities to keep the elder engaged throughout the day. We also work in close accordance to the World Health Organization layout. Prior to the COVID outbreak, we had close to 10 elders uh, benefiting from the daycare. And um, since, the, since the outbreak, keeping the safety of the elders in mind, we decided to pause the program. But definitely, uh, once things settle down, we definitely look forward to opening the center again, ensuring maximum safety. The reason why we're all here today is because today is the 30th anniversary of the International Day of Older Persons, which was initiated by the United Nations. It highlights the role of the healthcare workforce in contributing to the health of older persons. The 2020 observance also promotes decade of healthy aging, that is from 2020 to 2030, where they ensure that every human being regardless of age, will have an opportunity to fulfill their potential with maximum dignity and equality. Our speaker for today's session is Dr. Preetika Charin, who is a widely respected and senior consultant neurologist and neurosurgeon with several accolades to her name. She's also one of the founding members of the D Dementia Care Foundation. And uh, since the inception of the foundation, she has been an incredible support and guiding force for us. She's conducted the Aging Brain series, which is an informative health talk series, where she has spoken about the aging brain, dementia, Parkinson's disease, and stroke. It was widely appreciated by the attendees for the amount of information ma'am had given in a very short span. So... Preetika ma'am, we are truly privileged to have you as one of the founding members of the Dementia Care Foundation. Given your expertise and your extensive practice, I'm sure this session will be a great one. So I'm requesting Dr. Preetika to please ramp up the session. Yeah, thank you. Uh, namaste to everybody and best wishes to all the seniors who are uh, attending today. <clears throat> Uh, are you all able to hear me properly? Is the audio okay? Yes, ma'am, it's okay. Okay. Now, it has been shown that the 70s are a little bit more of a critical period in aging than any other part of our growing old. It's more things go wrong in the 70s than in the 60s. And if you cross the 70s and really ramp it up, and take advantage and you know protect yourself when you, you will usually reach your 80s and the 80s will be quite good actually so this has become a health fact and that is the reason why we have titled this talk as wrap up your 70s i myself have completed 72 i'm running 73 and uh, it is relevant to me as much as it is to any other 70 year olds here and that doesn't mean it only has applies to the 70 year olds it applies to everybody who wants to have a graceful and healthy aging i have a ppt presentation which i will start now See, when we grow old, what happens is there is a natural change in our body composition. And you'll notice that we that there is also a shrinkage. You'll notice that as you grow older, there's a tendency for you to lose a couple of inches as you go from your 20s to your 60s to your 80s. 
And there are many imaging techniques which can tell us about the change in the muscle versus the fat and all those changes which happen in body composition as a result of aging. The age-related changes affect us in many parts of the body. It can be in the brain mass and eyes, the depth of perception when we see. So that's why when you, if you drive when you're in your 60s and 70s, sometimes you'll find that in the car, the corners, you miss that and you sort of make a wrong calculation. The, the way discrimination of colors, the finer appreciation of different shades, the pupillary response, so the ability to adjust when you come from a bright light to a darker room, the ability to adjust is a bit slower. So you have to be careful if you come in from sunlight into the house, you might trip if you don't pause a little, adjust for some time and then adjust to the lower light in the room. The respiratory vital capacity, which has become very important today, our ability to breathe is actually comes down as we grow older. Now, this is of significance in this COVID area for the simple reason that the lung is the target organ of the COVID infection. Kidney function can be affected, especially if you're a diabetic or a hypertensive. And I told you there can be a two to three inch loss in height. The lower legs also, the blood flow can be impaired. There can be degeneration of the joints, a tendency for the total body water to have disturbances. So sometimes when you drink a lot of water, there is an entity known as water intoxication. What happens, the body sodium comes down and elderly people can get into what is known as hyponatremia, where they become unconscious and confused. And of course, nerve damage can occur also as you grow older. Now, this is just a whole list. I'm not going to spend too much time here, but which actually highlights that in each system, there are specific changes which happen, which lead to a clinical consequence. So what is it that we can expect in your 70s and beyond, both the good and the bad? And what is some advice on how to feel happy, sexy, and painful? Now, the brain shrinks in all of us. In fact, the shrinking starts at the age of 30 itself. And messages as you grow older travel more slowly between various areas of the brain. So most of us, when we are in our 60s or 70s, we have a little trouble remembering names or when we keep saying, what's that word, what's that word? It may be harder for us to multitask. It may also be a little harder for us to pay attention. But all this is not Alzheimer's disease, so don't worry. These are normal changes. In Alzheimer's and other types of dementia, you have much more severe trouble and your everyday tasks get impaired. Whereas these memory things, little, little blocks in memory don't affect your daily tasks. So the good news is that though there is a steep loss of brain function, which was thought initially to be intrinsic to aging, we know that today there are things that we can do to avoid it or to minimize it. And what are the three things that actually help that is regular mental stimulation. So you have to exercise your brain the same way as you exercise your body. Physical exercise can help the brain. A substance called BDNF, or brain-derived neurotropic factor, is produced when you do physical exercise. And that actually regenerates and nourishes the neurons. Social interaction. Unfortunately, COVID has pushed us into social isolation. But if we somehow, even activities like this, we are interacting in a way socially with other people and that's very critical so i would suggest that all elders and all younger people who have elders in their home please engage them in your daily life in your conversations in your decisions in in and in your fun times etc because you have to engage them in some social interaction if you just leave them alone saying okay there's a, we are busy, they let them just sit and do their own thing. It may not be a good idea. But remember that just because you're old and that's just because things are a little slower, it doesn't mean that your instincts are not as sharp as 
before. Older adults, in fact, do better than 30-year-olds on intuitive decisions. They did a study in college students where they gave a series of general questions and where for to college students and to the or to an older group of people. And what happened then? They found that the younger people finished all the question answers very much faster. But the older people they were more accurate, they got more right answers. So the best prevention plan is intellectual stimulation, time with family and friends, and exercise. The not, the not so good news is that your brain circuitry does start to burn out with age, but we can compensate based on our past experience. And that is what we call as the wisdom of old age. But if you're feeling increasingly forgetful, and if you feel that there is an active interference because of your memory issues, you need to get evaluated if you, in case you are going in for Alzheimer's or any other form of dementia. Next, we move to the heart. As you grow older, your heart cannot as, beat as fast during exercise or when you're stressed. This is why sometimes when an pers older person hears some shocking news, their heart can even stop and they can actually die on the spot of a heart attack. Its walls, the heart walls get thicker, the valves get stiffer, blood flow is not as good as before. Also, the ele electrical system of the heart can start giving trouble and you can get irregular heartbeats in old age. And also, if you have diabetes or hypertension or cholesterol or high triglycerides, you can collect all these and build up plaques in the arteries of the heart. But all this risk again, the same thing, exercise, heart healthy diet, and no smoking. If you do these three, there is a good chance that your heart will thank you for it. I think today is also, today or yesterday was World Heart Day also. So it's important for us to take care of our heart. Now older hearts pump the same volume of blood than younger hearts do. So the, don't have to worry that less blood is going. But the, because it's getting thicker and its valves are stiffer, it is not so efficient. And it must also, it has been shown that 70 plus seniors, men and women, if they spend half an hour a day on activities like walking, dancing, which is an aerobic activity, there is a 20 to 40% lower risk of dying from heart disease than in those who had no activity. Now, there is an entity known as atrial fibrillation, which can happen in a heart just because it is an older aged heart. This is called, uh, it's a heart arrhythmia. It's very common with age. There is, there's nothing, I mean, it's not that you can prevent it. It can happen to anybody. But the bad thing about that is when it beats, it beats at the rate of 300 per minute. Then what it does is it throws blood clots into the rest of the uh, vascular system. And there is an increased risk of stroke. And this is very important. If you feel unusually tired, if you feel very weak when you're exercising or you get dizzy when you exercise, please tell your doctor. An ECG will make this diagnosis. And it's a leading cause of death for people between 75 and 85. Then we look at the skin. When you grow older, you'll find that you're getting age spots, you're getting wrinkles, and you may bruise more quickly. Just a simple scratching, maybe if a mosquito bit you, can break your skin. The skin may be drier, may be paper-like, may be itchy, irritated, and it's advisable to use a gentler soap. The, in fact, baby soap is good for older people. And to use moisturizer and sunscreen regularly. And if you are living... In a, in a very uh, a humidifier is good if the inside temperature of the room needs to be modified. So wrinkles and lines are plenty, but the options for keeping the skin bright are numerous. Today, there are cosmetic surgeons who will give you full exfoliating uh, creams, moisturizing creams, glycolic acid peels, and laser treatments and all that. So if you're very fussy about how your skin is, the dermatologist and the cosmetologist can help you. There is very another very interesting phenomenon is 
that our nose and our ears have what is called as non-articular cartilage. Cartilage is, a, is a something that is softer than bone, but harder than muscle. And it is present between all the joints. It's like a cushion. And in the nose and in the ear, we have the same thing. But this is not acting as a cushion in a joint. And it starts to grow. And you'll find that your face probably, your nose looks bigger in your older age than it was in a photograph when you were young. But this is something you can't do anything about. But the reason for that is to enable us to funnel in the sounds and smells as we age. So it has a protective purpose. And uh, if you want to have various skin tightening treatments, you can approach your doctor. So treat your skin tenderly. Don't scrub it too hard. Maybe you are used to using some scrubber and scrubbing. Be careful when you're older, your skin may actually get irritated when you do that. So the general health phenomena, which we had told you about smoking, alcohol, etc. Those have to be followed. And uh, the cotton clothing is preferred to synthetics, especially close to the body. Your nutrition, your metabolism also slows as you eat. And you may need to cut calories. But what happens in most older people is they automatically cut calories. They eat less. And if you're eating less, make sure that you're eating nutrient-dense food. That your food contains fewer calories but more nutrition. And fruits, vegetables, whole grain, low-fat dairy, lean protein, all of these will be give you more nutritive value and less of bulk and less of calories. Now the calories for men in a sedentary male over the age of 70, it's about 2000. For women, it's about 1600 to 2000. Men, healthy men over 70 should aim for 56 grams of protein. Women, 46 grams. We want you to eat a lot of fiber, otherwise constipation is an issue. And carbohydrates, both men and women, it is better that they have limited carbohydrates. Now all this is very well. It sounds like Greek and Latin to you. You don't know what to do. There is a special food pyramid which has been created for older adults. And you'll find that the base of the pyramid is activity. The next is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight glasses of water minimum. And most of the other food groups are more or less equally distributed except for the fat, which is half of the other sections. But this is all very confusing. So the best way to uh, have is your plate. Look at your plate. Half your plate should have the fruits and vegetables. Make water your drink of choice, not Coca-Cola and Pepsi and things like that. One fourth of your food must be protein. The remaining one fourth can be anything. Anything that you choose. It doesn't matter what you eat in that remaining one fourth. Vitamins and minerals. Elderly people get into a vitamin D and vitamin B12 deficiency. So both of these, it is important not only to provide it in the food, it's also important to take a supplement. Then we move on to your bones, joints and muscles. <clears throat> one in four women and some men over the age of 65, have the disease called osteoporosis. Here the bones become very thin, the muscle gets very weak, and this whole skeleton gets stiff. So strength and flexibility will come down. And in your 70s, this is one of the reasons why you lose height because the discs atrophy. Between each vertebra, there is a cushion cartilage called the disc. The discs begin to atrophy and so you lose height uh, by up to 2 to 3 inches. If you do exercise, especially weight-bearing exercise, some of these changes can be prevented or even modified. So you can maintain muscle strength through activity. But the bone thinning disease also requires vitamin D supplementation. So the kind of exercises that will help you are called, and if you have, what will happen is, after some time, if you have worn joints and you're taking anti-inflammatory drugs, you may need to even go in for surgery. Many people who have problems with the osteoporosis and who 
have a fracture, etc. Fortunately, today there are regenerative techniques where they inject platelet-rich plasma into the uh, joint. Or you can go for a joint replacement itself with which many people are living good lives. So weight-bearing exercises are nothing but walking, various forms of dance, climbing stairs, and anything that is useful to make your bones actually do some work. So you, it actually osteoporosis, the target areas are the wrist, the hips, and the spine. And the risk factors include just the fact of aging, smoking, low calcium intake, excessive caffeine, coffee, alcohol, low vitamin D, low body mass, very frail elderly people are more prone to osteoporosis and some hereditary. So you can talk to your doctor, you can take some medication or you can undertake some lifestyle changes. So the kind of exercises you should do are repetitive exercises like up and down, up and down on this or with light weights, weight training. But another very, very important area where elderly have to focus is balance. So when you're doing exercise, you should have a mix of flexibility exercise, strength training exercise, balance training, and the, one of the best forms of exercise which provides most of this is yoga. So, and in yoga, you also, if you add pranayam with it, you'll find that the respiratory exercises are also built. Sleep. As you grow older, you'll find that you need less sleep. You may wake up more. You may have trouble going back to sleep. It can be an issue, especially for women, in that they don't get sleep properly. You may find that you fall asleep very early. Sometimes by 8, 8.30, you feel drowsy. And you'll wake up at 3 a.m., 4 a.m. And now this, younger people find a big disturbance sometimes from elderly. So despite this, you still have to get 7 to 8 hours of sleep. So let us talk about some of the good sleep habits. So one thing is you have to try to go to bed and get up at the same time every day. Avoid coffee and alcohol late in the evening. Have a comfortable mattress and bedding. Drink water. Do some relaxation exercises before bed. Spend some time with nature. Go for a walk in the evening. Read a book. Don't sit with the iPad. Now even the elderly are sitting with an iPad. Or don't even read a book or read the book on Kindle. Read it as a book. Because reading a book is almost guaranteed to make you drowsy. And have an early light dinner. Ideal is to finish eating by 7.30 and to go to bed about 9.30, 10. Coffee and chocolates after dinner, hot bedroom with no air circulation, poor quality bedding, staying indoors all day and doing no exercise, stress. All of these are uh, likely to keep you awake and damage your sleep. Now about the immune system, everybody is talking so much about the immune system today in the COVID era. Our body's defenses will come down. Your immune system gets weaker by the fact that you're getting older. And because of that, even a vaccine does not work so well for you as it would for others. So it is very important for us to conserve our immunity. But on the plus side, if your immunity is down, your allergies and autoimmune disorders like rheumatoid arthritis, etc., which you have, may actually get better. So when you get a flu shot or a pneumonia shot or herpes shot, you'll have to be given a higher dose by virtue of your age. So the less aggressive immune response means you're more susceptible to getting sick, which is why the elderly are particularly told to stay home and not expose themselves to COVID. And remember that chronic inflammation, if you have chronic inflammation, that also interferes, especially when you have chronic arthritis, etc. It can interfere with the immune response. So how do you ramp up your immunity? A new study suggests that you can boost the effectiveness of your vaccine by getting at least seven hours of sleep a night. The other reason why we have a loss of immunity gives us problem is that the rate of cancer 
also rises as you grow older. So if you've reached about 85, cancer-free, the likelihood of your not getting cancer is very high after the age of 85. Your sexuality. In today's world, more people in their 70s are sexually active. But there are also challenges. In the women, there is vaginal dryness. In men, there can be erectile dysfunction. And also body image. You don't look as beautiful as you looked when you were younger. And so this can also interfere sometimes with libido and the desire to engage in sexual intercourse. So you have to talk to each other and see what works for you. And companionship is very important. Touch is very important because there is a substance called oxytocin in the brain, which is produced, which improves bonding. And it is very important that this bonding chemical should be released in the brain. And that happens both during sexual intercourse and both during just being together, enjoying each other's company, talking with each other and things like that. Just spending time with each other. So 44% of women, 68 through 80, they say they are very satisfied with their sex lives. Whereas 55 to 68, only 30% of women said they are satisfied. So as you grow older, you become wiser and you're able to appreciate the more intimate aspects of a sexual relationship than just the, you appreciate the companionship and all of that more than the physical aspect alone. Your vision, the pupils react more slowly to changes in light because your eye muscles are weaker. So I told you, when you come from bright sunlight indoors, you need more time to adjust. You cannot pick out fine objects. And the lens is thicker. You all know about cataract. And that ha nowadays we have lens replacement. And so we can have near normal vision even after removing a cataract. Dry eyes is a problem. Simply the eye will keep watering. There are artificial tears which you can use. It's very, very important to get an eye checkup once a year because there are some problems you will not be aware of unless you have a checkup. There is something called glaucoma, which is increased pressure in the eye. Cataract sometimes has to be discovered by the eye doctor. And there is a thing called age related macular degeneration, which actually the inner most part of the retina, which is where you have maximum vision, it just starts degenerating for no reason at all, just due to age. Some of the risk factors are aging, smoking, exposure, too much exposure to UV rays, and certain medical conditions like blood pressure and atherosclerosis. So you can prevent excess UV rays coming, that is going in the sunlight, you can wear sunglasses, it blocks the UV rays. About one third of people, 65 to 75, have hearing loss. About half of those over 75 do. Yesterday I visited a friend and they were saying that they went and visited a lady who is 72 years old, who is absolutely not able to hear, but she refuses to wear a hearing aid. She says, it's all right, I'm living all alone. What does it, why does it matter? What, why it matters is that if you cannot hear somebody coming or if you cannot hear something falling, etc. You are at risk. So it should actually wearing a hearing aid and nowadays you have beautiful ones which just tiny ones which go right into the ear is nothing shameful. So just give up your ego, see the doctor and wear a hearing aid if you need to, if you have problems with your hearing. So there are other methods, there are a lot of methods that they can suggest which will help you to answer a phone better. There are adjustments in the hearing aid which can be made for all these. So in general, you have to preserve your senses. You have to preserve your hearing, your taste, your smell, your vision, all of this. And this, there is nothing much we can do about it. There are a lot of things that will happen because we are growing old, but we can enjoy whatever little we have for as long as we have. So in this, what you have to do, you may be having dry eye, you have to use uh, drops to 
to create more tears. Then so I told you already, swallow your pride, get tested for a hearing aid. But on the whole, when we look at seniors, most of them are pretty happy. There was a recent study which showed that of all the decades surveyed, the 70s tend to be some of the happiest years of your life. And one of the reasons they found was because as you get older, you know, bad times are going to pass. COVID is going to go away ultimately over time. You also know that good times will pass. And so you appreciate the good times and make it more precious. So it may be, you may not be able to stay away from stressful situations, but try to sort of, you know, take things calmly, take things in your, in the stride, go with the flow. And sometimes be less controlling, learn to let go. Because we think we are controlling and making things happen. Actually, we are not. Things are happening anyway. We just have to go along like a river with the flow. So many of you will notice that your spouse is probably mellower than he or she once was. Because the ability to regulate one's emotions improves as you get older. So as long as your health remains good, you can expect to be happy. Negative emotions like anger and sadness actually become less frequent in age. If you have social interaction, you are exercising, you're eating healthy, you're getting enough sleep, and you're maintaining a reasonable level of health. Digestive system. All of us know that ulcers are more in the older patient. We find it more difficult to digest the foods we used to be able to eat. Aspirin, which is often given to prevent strokes in many elderly, that can actually cause gastric irritation. Painkillers, NSAIDs, they can also irritate the stomach. But the most common problem at this age is constipation. For that, you have to get enough fiber, you have to drink enough water, and you have to get enough exercise. Some medicines can create constipation. But you have to discuss that with your doctor and they'll make adjustments. Now, it's no secret that when you get older, your body doesn't work the way it used to. It also applies to how you react to medicines. There may be a medicine that you were taking for a long time and it was working well for you. And you'll find that suddenly you're not, it's not working so well. And one of the reasons is because your digestive system is not able to absorb the medicine. Also, your liver is not able to handle the medicine properly. Or you may have kidney trouble in which the medicine is not eliminated properly. So you have to ask your doctor on the impact of the medicines that you're taking, especially if you're taking a particular medicine for many years. You have to periodically check whether that is actually doing the job or not over time. Then you have to motivate your metabolism. Metabolism typically slows up to 5% per decade. It doesn't mean because of that that you must gain weight. If you stay active and you cut calories, you'll be fine. And we told you that digestion may be an issue because of less hydrochloric acid in the stomach. You may need to supplement your B12. And these are all easy to do things. So as you age, vitamin D is another substance that you don't produce very well. So vitamin D supplementation is also necessary. Also, the sensation of hunger and thirst can decrease with age. So don't wait till you're hungry or thirsty to eat or drink water. Plan to eat several small meals. Eat them with six cups of liquid, maybe a soup or something like that. For us, we have our rasam, which is excellent, actually a very good, we can have a cup full of rasam. And of course, make sure that you drink eight glasses of water per day. The urinary tract, many of us have bladder problems. The bladder cannot hold as much as it used to because the muscles that support it have lost strength. So sometimes when you squeeze, you don't really, may not be able to empty, especially for men, if they have an enlarged prostate, they'll find that empty is a bit of a problem. In many women, in their 70s will complain that when they cough, when they sneeze, when they laugh, there may be some urine leaking. This is called stress incontinence. And this also, especially if you had a lot of children, if you've had many pregnancies, it can be more frequent in such people. And it's because the pelvic floor, the muscles are weak. 
So prostate, uh, we know very well, Kuri is sponsoring this uh, meeting. And uh, prostate cancer is something which can create problems in the older male. And they need to be checked periodically with a simple it's a blood test, as well as an examination by a urologist. Now, the tendency for most elderly to go several times to the toilet in the night to pass urine is something we know. It's okay. Most people go two, three times. If you're going more frequently, maybe you have an infection, maybe you have an incontinence or an overactive bladder that you need to check with your doctor. There is a bladder training and pelvic floor exercises which are called Kegels exercises which can help strengthen the muscles around the bladder. You can ask your doctor about the Kegels exercises, you can ask your physiotherapist, you can ask your fitness instructor and they will all guide you. This is particularly useful for women with stress incontinence. It doesn't, it's not very useful for men for their problem. So, 25 to 30 percent of those in their 70s get up at least twice. So don't feel bad. But one of the ways to minimize the frequency is try not to have too many fluids after 6 p.m. Also, avoid caffeine in the afternoon. You may be on a pill called a diuretic for your high blood pressure. Talk to your doctor if that pill can be taken in the morning rather than in the evening. And if you're not having any symptoms, don't unnecessarily go and get your urine tested, saying you may have an infection. So, so drinking water is the best treatment, actually, for you to prevent urinary tract infections. Oral health. When you go for a surgery, if you're above 60, one of the things that the anesthetist always worries about is whether there are any loose teeth. Because when he puts the tube in to give the anesthesia, these teeth can fall off and can, you can swallow them. So it's important for us to keep our teeth healthy. And we know many people in their 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s still have their normal original teeth. And it is possible if you take care of your teeth. So there are some medical conditions like diabetes and heart disease and some medicines which can actually damage the teeth. So you need to be careful about that. Go and see your dentist at least once a year for a routine check because you may have some small eruption inside which may be the early sign of oral cancer. So you have to have proper brushing and flossing routine and avoid smoking and chewing tobacco or taking tobacco in any form. Yes, it is important to take note of your feet also because feet also change with age. You'll find that your shoe size changes. Your, the way your shoe fits will change. There may be a mild arthritis in your foot. When you walk the way you, your, the curve of your, uh, the arch of your foot may actually become a little flatter. So it's very important for you to check if the footwear that you're using is appropriate. And go for comfort more than style. Because you'll find that you need to be comfortable and not go on. And check with a physician or a podiatrist. Go for a pedicure. Or podiatrists used to be there in Bata before. But go for a pedicure so that ingrowing toenails and those kind of things, especially in people with diabetes, this is very important. In diabetic patients, we tell them at least once a day, look at your foot, whether you look at your face or not in the mirror in case there are injuries there which you are not able to feel because you may have neuropathy. So you can't turn back the clock, but there are a lot of ways to stay healthy in your 70s. We have learned that diet and exercise are important. Monitor your health, especially when it comes to watching for problems like cancer and heart disease. Stay active socially, challenge yourself mentally, and they will fight mental decline. And talk to your doctor about changes in vision, hearing, digestion, etc. So that he can, he or she can help you so that you are thriving and not just surviving as you grow old. So let us aim to spend our last days in a rocking chair, not in a wheelchair. And the trick is to age gracefully. It's 
So thank you very much. I hope I gave you some valuable uh, insights and it's not very difficult to do. And I think we can all make a small correction in something that we are doing so that we are able to ramp up our seventies. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was very informative, starting from mental health till the food care you told, entire uh, aspect of the 70s. So, hope the audience enjoyed uh, and uh, gained more knowledge on the health aspect as well. Um, there is a question which has been uh, there in the chat box. Um, uh, Mrs. Padma has raised a question um, that I have a query around beber about beverages for elderly. Is it okay for senior citizens to take black tea and black coffee in moderate duration? Yes. Now, in general, both black tea and black coffee, the problem is the caffeine. So caffeine can actually, I told you, the heart is prone to getting arrhythmias. And people who used to drink a nice filter, cup, filter coffee with a nice large cup of filter coffee, Sometimes we'll find that now coffee kurchodna parparapik. So if they feel like that, it's not advisable. And it also depends on the quantity you take. So I suppose a small cup, like in the, the Westerners after dinner coffee, they give in one very, very tiny cup. Maybe you could have a small cup just to keep your taste buds happy. Thanks for answering, ma'am. Uh, anybody uh, would like to put questions kindly, put it in the chat box so that a doctor can answer your queries. You can even make comments. There is no, no restriction. I mean, if you have some more ideas to add to the, what I have given, you're welcome to make a comment as well. Dr. Jainti has commented yeah. uh, one reason uh, for the jawline to sag. This may also be due to attrition of teeth and vertical dimension getting reduced. No, that I told you, no, this supportive cartilages and supportive this thing and the skin, the skin itself loses its elasticity. That is why the sagging. Napinai is here. <laughs> Okay, hi Napinai. Why don't you say something? Add to what I've said. Dairy products were in the form of milk and curds. Sure, milk sometimes people are unable to digest because they may have lactose intolerance, which can develop in age or old age, which was not there earlier. They can actually develop it later. So if that is the case, curd is a better option because curd is full of microbiomes, which are the good bacteria in our body. So, uh, in fact, our South Indian traditional diet is probably one of the best diets in the world. The South Indian vegetarian diet. If you just look at it, other than the quantity of rice which we can reduce, or the average, there will be one puriyal, there will be one kutu, there will be a kai in the kurumbu or sambar, there will be a soup like rasam, and then we have curd. And in many cases, there's also tair pachadi. So, and maybe okay. The, the luxury is aplam or chips. But it's wonderful. Somebody is asking about advice for gas problems. I'm a neurologist. So I don't actually handle that. But in general, one of the things, some vegetables are gassy. So you need to, there's plenty of information on the internet. You go and gas producing vegetable. If you put in Google, you'll get a whole list. Usually the broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, those kind of vegetables. Most of our Kadrika, uh, Vendaka, Avaraka, Kotaurangas are not. And not only that, these also have a lot of fiber. So they are good for you. Treadmill elders can use the treadmill by all means, but uh, you know you have to be supervised. Make sure that you don't get on or get off while it is still running because you can fall. And also, you have to set a speed which is reasonable. You have to check with your doctor what speed is okay because that uh, we do a test called TMT, 
and if you get breathless during TMT or get you show BP or uh, heart rate changes, then we we think you are vulnerable for heart attack. So you have to be a little careful. Have it monitored and you can do it. Ma'am, there is another question. Are sure. vitamins or nutrients lost due to South Indian cooking? Yeah, we tend to overcook our food a little. So that is why I told you the Thair Pachadi actually gives you raw food. In Kosmili, Thair Pachadi. So what you can do is, you can add a, a salad to the meal plan. And like I said, also, now another thing is fruit. We tend to eat the fruit like a dessert or something. It's better for fruit to be eaten separate from the meal. So my suggestion would be to either eat the fruit one hour before the meal or one hour after the meal, not with the meal. Because you don't get the benefit of the fruit if you eat it with the meal. And another question, blood vessels at neck area visible, how to avoid this? How can they be visible? How can they be visible? I don't know. I don't understand that. That is what has been mentioned. Yeah, more, it is not visible. In, I don't know what they mean unless there's some specific problem they have. Anybody else? Anything else? Please feel free to ask because I, I consider this a service. Okay. Now, Pinnai ma'am had asked, uh, like, I, I wish you could share to the younger generation on how to avoid dementia. Okay. The first thing which the younger generation needs to change in today's world is, we keep saying physical activity, mental activity, these are all useful for nurturing the brain. But, if you look at it, the, let us take IT as a typical example because majority of people are sitting with a computer. There is hardly any physical activity. There is a lot of mental activity. But this is not the kind of mental activity that is stimulating. Not always, not necessarily. It is more a, a boring kind of repetitive kind of mental activity. If it is creative, there are a lot of areas where the work is creative. Then it will give mental stimulation because we need to stimulate both the left and the right brain. The left brain requires verbal stimulation. The right brain requires visual spatial. That means like drawing, art, abstract thinking, that kind of stimulation. So they really have to widen their area of interest. The second thing which the younger generation of today is actually, uh, it's very sad to see. And men and women are smoking and drinking more than they ever did. And if you can't do something actively to improve your health, at least you can stop hurting your health. Ma'am, next. With, ah, yes, sorry. Uh, PCOS, can it lead to cognitive issues in women? No. It can lead to anxiety. Because you are usually obese, you have hairiness, you have these menstrual issues, and you feel that you know, you're, you, you're not like everybody else. So you can have anxiety, but not cognitive issues. Um, the next question is, what exercises you advise for brain stimulation and memory improvement? Sudoku, crossword puzzles, word puzzles. A uh, lot of you can, and mandala drawing. Nowadays, that is very popular. Coloring books. All of these are mental stimulation. Next question by Jairam Ramachandran. Mr. Jairam Ramachandran. He's asking, uh, his wife is getting frequent headache due to sinus. Is it necessary to consult neurologist? No, sinus headaches, ENT specialist. Next question is from Mrs. Neeraja. To avoid un, uh, how to avoid uh, unsteadiness while walking? No, no. How old is she? Um, she hasn't mentioned age actually. It depends on how old she is and if she's having a symptom of unsteadiness, she has to get checked. Because it may be due to circulation problems to the brain. It may be due to Parkinson's disease. 
it may be due to something that needs needs to be attended to our next question is uh, from rama kashyap what can i do to prevent heavy loss of hair yeah, i am not the expert even i lo i've lost a lot of my own hair when you grow older these things happen and doctor how to avoid over sweating next question no comment i don't know the answer for that okay next question is ma'am sleeping time is getting increased so is it anything wrong it depends because there are some sleep disorders where you can sleep untimely and you can sleep excessively narcolepsy is a condition where like this they'll be giving a talk and then suddenly they'll go off to sleep and then they'll wake up and again after a few minutes or a few hours they'll go off to sleep like that so that is a disease there are other sleep disorders you can there are specialists who uh, do will do a sleep study and they'll analyze it do an eeg and uh, be able to identify if it's just normal or whether it is a sleep disorder thanks for attending the questions then we'll move on to the next question uh, how to uh, avoid unsteadiness the same question is that the age is 78 years a day yeah, yeah. you have to get checked because you may be normally unsteady because you are frail or you're weak or whatever but you may also have a problem in your circulation or in in the nervous system which makes you unsteady like uh, if you're a diabetic and you have diminished sensation in your feet you're not getting the feedback proprioceptive feedback and so you will tend to be unsteady when you walk even in parkinsonism you can be unsteady in certain cerebellar disorders you can be unsteady blood circulatory problems vertebro baseline insufficiency you can be unsteady i'm sorry i'm using a lot of diagnostic words that is important for you to get a check up okay the next question is untimely sleeping what is the reason i already answered that. and uh, next is what are the ways to find out the mild cognitive problems in middle age if you are having forgetfulness which is interfering with your life that's an early sign and if other people are complaining about your memory issues or your uh, behavior then you know that it requires to be assessed we have to do formal assessments for that ma'am uh, the again the same questions with respect to the blood vessels uh, blood vessels are prominent at neck area comes out from skin what is the cause for it maybe you are just a thin person with are you a thin person or if you are a plump person fat will you know buffer it but if you are a thin person it will show and it's all right there nothing to worry about audience would like to ask any more questions ma'am i have a doubt with yeah. respect to fruits intake you said uh, you can have it either one hour before the meal or after the meal mm. uh, how about having it for breakfast or dinner sure sure that's fine you can have it instead of food instead of food okay so but uh, but what i suggest is many people eat a large bowl of fruit for breakfast mm. and that's fine that's absolutely okay even for dinner it's okay yeah in fact many elderly find that that helps them not to get constipation mm -hmm. but if they are having a little bit of uh, you know food other items of food what you can do is give them their dinner at about 7 7:30 and give them this fruit at about 5 5:30 okay next uh, question ma'am any suggestions for good deep sleep i've already given no i gave a, one of the slides showed all the tips for good sleep somebody wants to comment about old is gold i fully agree <laughs> okay so what is the treatment for aortic knuckle no the aortic knuckle getting prominent is a natural thing which happens with aging there's no need to treat it if you're not having any symptoms and it's an incidental finding on the x-ray nothing to worry 
Um, there is one more question. Like, what do you think of volunteering at social service organizations to engage the older person's mind and body? I recommend it, and I, in fact, I push my patients to doing it. In fact, I had a Parkinson's patient who was in a wheelchair, was making a real nuisance of himself to his wife, who I think she had a schizophrenic son, and she was torn between these two people, and she got really stressed out. But what I told him was that nearby they had a lot of slums. So I said, call all the children from the slum in the evening and take one hour, teach them how to speak English. And it was so therapeutic. Okay. I think our chat box is full of questions. Uh, Boiled vegetables, yes, you can take. Okay. If you can't diet, some people know because the chewing can be affected. You may not be able to eat raw vegetables. So sometimes if you want to get the benefit of raw vegetables, you can just lightly steam it. So it gets a bit softer and it's easier to eat. And of course, in present day times, it also sterilizes it. Anybody would like to ask any other questions? Good. I think everybody likes the talk at least. Thank you. Thank you for your thank you for, your, uh, for all your uh, comments and because I consider this awareness about health to be my duty. I believe it. I mean, I look at it as a service because not enough people are being told the actual facts about how it's possible for us to maintain our health by tapping into the body's own healing. The body, when you have a cut, who comes and fixes it? The body heals it, no? Yes. Most of the time. So, the body has infinite capacity to heal. We just have to take it easy, watch it, nurture it, cherish it, take care of it. But for that, many people feel guilty about loving themselves. It's important for you to love yourself if you have to do self-care. And uh, one tip for the older people in the audience. Please understand, just because you are, you have brought up children, you have done this for them, that for them, you've done all that, please don't act entitled. Nobody is obliged to do anything for anybody. Everything everybody does for you or gives to you is a privilege. Don't think of it as a right. If you just change that mindset a little bit, then you will be more cooperative when you're living with younger people. The younger people will be more affectionate towards you. It's most of the time the discord is because the older people say, oh, I did this for you, I did that for you, and you're not even doing this for me. Not in today's world. Everybody is so preoccupied with their own issues and problems. So you don't be an additional burden to anybody. But at the same time, don't go to the other extreme. Don't uh, neglect yourself and say, oh, I don't want to be a burden on anybody and keep on grumbling and mumbling. Be a happy person and see how you can contribute. Taking care of grandchildren, most grandparents are very happy to do. But there are so many other ways in which you can contribute. So find creative ways. It's good for your brain also. Thank you, ma'am. I think all participants have uh, got their answer. Excellent explanation from your end. And there is one more final question which I like to highlight. Uh, iron rich food may cause constipation. What yes. is going to be given for increasing hemoglobin in old age? In fact, I myself, because I had a cancer rectum in 2016 and my hemoglobin has come down to 8, which is not good at all. And whenever I take any anything to improve the hemoglobin, I get constipation. So it is a tough thing to deal with. The iron capsules are not a choice. There are some homeopathic ions which may work without causing constipation. But uh, Kirei has got a lot of iron. So you can take dates. What I did was I was taking date syrup because I had to avoid fiber also. 
because I had an ileostomy which could get blocked. So I was having date syrup and date syrup definitely worked, definitely helped. But if you're a diabetic, date syrup is not, is going to make your diabetes worse. So you have to be careful what you take. It is tough, but uh, eggs are good. Eggs have iron. So I was taking one boiled egg a day. And uh, pudina, tulsi, all this, they say, helps. So you can, you know, green juice, they call it a green juice. So you can have some green juice. Thank you so much, ma'am, for answering. And uh, I think uh, we have come to the end of the session. I think Gayatri can wind up, no? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, do a just uh, the moment that you said uh, uh, Gayatri speak, uh, there was a call coming and I had to disconnect the other call. <laughs> so that sorry, I could sorry, get on. Sorry. Thank you so much, Madam. Thank you. Um, and thank you everybody for joining today. Um, it was, um, you know, with all this COVID and uh, everything happening, um, the Dementia Care Foundation has been quiet for some time. But, um, you know, all that we wanted to do is still uh, there. And um, it was Madam's idea. She called me up yesterday and said, today is World Elders Day and we need to do something about this. And she said, I'll give a talk on, um, you know, ramp up your 70s. So I think Madam is a perfect example of how anybody should be in their 70s. And I hope I am, you know, I would be like her. So she's a perfect example. And uh, thank you, Madam, so much for, sh I mean, thank you for sharing your experience and thank you for your time. And uh, from all the, uh, uh, what uh, people have written there, I think it has been a really useful session. And we have also recorded this video. So in case um, any of you would like to share it with your family or friends, um, please let us know. We'd be happy to share this with you. And uh, um, I, I also suggest that because we don't know the duration of the COVID uh, thing, mm -hmm. that uh, maybe those, if uh, some of the people who want help from Dementia Care Foundation can get in touch with Gayatri and her yes. team. And uh, it is possible to do a Zoom evaluation. Absolutely. Like this, like this meeting. So mm -hmm. somebody was asking, how do we test for cognitive, how do we do cognitive testing? Yes. For so it is very people. possible for a, a cognitive testing to be done like this because a lot of it is question and answer and now a lot of online stuff is going on. So it's possible. So if anybody requires any help, mm -hmm. please mm -hmm. don't hesitate to approach them because they'll figure out something. We don't have to be physically in touch with each other. We can be virtually in touch with each other. Absolutely, madam. We'll be very happy to do that also. Yeah. And um, we'll share our details, the Dementia Care Foundation details with you. Um, uh, Rama, kindly share the our details on the chat box so that everybody has our contact number at least so that in case they need to contact us for any help, um, we'd be happy to, happy to help, help them and happy to oblige. Um, thank you, everybody. And okay. I, I just saw a message. Uh, of, I think it's from Ms. Tara asking for the the video and uh, the recording. So kindly share your, if anybody would like the recorded session, kindly share your email ID or your WhatsApp number so that we can share it either through WhatsApp or through email. Right. And Jayanti said that I made 70 sweet. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah, I, bye thank bye you, everybody. madam. Bye, everybody. Thank you, madam. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Okay. I leave then. Yes. Thank you, madam. Bye. Thank you, Gayatri, ma'am. I on behalf. Thank you, Rama. Thank you, ma'am. On behalf of the entire uh, the uh, TTC of the Dementia Care Foundation, I would like to thank each and every participant, the delegates who have spent their time to get their gain their knowledge. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be coming up with many more sessions like this. Hope you give the same support. And thank you once again. We are uh, you know, leaving the meeting now. Yes, thank you, Rama. Just make, um, make sure that I think we'll hold on till everybody sends their uh, numbers to us. Sure. So 
kindly make a note of all the numbers so that we'll be able to send the recorded session to them on WhatsApp or through email. So okay. I think maybe we just hold on for a little longer time. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Keep, keep the chat open. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Rama. Thank you, team. Bye. Participants, uh, we would be sharing a senior care uh, service. Uh, hope you can utilize that. Uh, it has been shared by uh, Swaha, the uh, one of the participants, and uh, you can uh, you can reach them for any kind of support uh, for elderly people and who are in need of uh, medicines, doctor, any kind of support you need. You are you are most welcome to approach them. Okay, I think most of them have shared their details uh, and now we are uh, closing the session. Thank you so much again. Thank you so much all for joining us. We'll see you in the next session. Bye.